All right, next I'm gonna show you the browse and scrape technology, which is my favorite part of the software and actually one of the reasons I designed it in the first place. But if you go to pins and then browse and scrape, you have a different way of getting um, data from Pinterest. So you can just manually enter in the Pinterest links right into this little window, this little text box here, and you can click analyze and it will get the, um, the data for the pins. So let's say if you get pin links from some other external resource, another software, or you manually get them from your web browser or any other way that you usually do that, you can just paste them in here. You do have the option of right clicking, you paste from a, uh, you get pins from a text link or other project files within the software. But anyhow, then you have two other ways of getting links. You can get them using browse and scrape or by entering content. So I'll do the content in a different video. Let's concentrate on the browser. So if you click this, I've built in an integrated browser. It's just a simple browser, so it's not like, um, you know, Chrome or something like that. But basically on the left, there's bookmarks. In the middle is the browser. This is your address bar. This is how you add more bookmarks. You just click that. These are your controls for your browser. And then we have the live scraping module over here, which by default, default is automatically activated. If you want to stop live scraping, just click that button. It tells you here scraping is not live. So what does this mean? What scraping? So what's happening in the background right now, it's it's always looking for pins in the browser. And it's not only just looking for pins, it's also looking for ads. Because what's awesome, when you're logged into your Pinterest account, Pinterest will show you ads based on your browsing behavior, your history, your browsing history. So there's always times as a promoter or as a marketer where you need to get data for those ads. And from what I found on the internet, I don't think there's other tools that do this. So I just gotta show you what I've, what I've done. This is really exciting. So I have have some default um, bookmarks here. Let's go through them. So the first one, let's go to Explore, for example. Without logging into Pinterest, Pinterest will allow you to go certain places. Um, there's an Explore section. They give you um, a bunch of different places you can explore different categories. So let's go like, say for example, DIY and crafts. So if I click there, now keep in mind, I'm not logged in to my account, so I may not find any ads. They don't really serve ads to you unless you're logged into your account. So ads are not gonna pop up when you're not logged into your account. That's just something that Pinterest does. But as you can see over here, it's already found 15 pins on this page that we're browsing right now. So that's pretty cool. So it's automatically scraped them for us. So as we scroll down, you'll see it'll start adding, as more come down to the bottom, it'll add over here. As you can see here, now there's 111. So it kind of adds as you scroll, or if you click into, whoops, if you click into one, it'll also continue scrolling, or you can continue to scroll, you'll see it keeps getting them. And then when you're you're happy with what you've like sort of looked at, like you can pretty much just go anywhere. Just keep searching, looking around, and it keeps adding the pins it finds in the browser. So we're already at 157 pins. So all we have to do now is we can hit this little add button here. So and then it'll add those pins. So the, the pin links here will be added over here. So we can go add, and you can see the added all, already. So we can, um, if we click yes, it'll just close the integrated browser, or if you click no, just keep it open. You can kind of put it aside if you want. And now we have all these pins here. So now what you have to do, if we want to get the data for all those pins, is click analyze. And now boom, it's gonna go through and do its magic and get all the data for all of those pins that we are browsing. So I'm just gonna click stop. And now we can get all the data just like before. So I'm just gonna clear that out, clear this out. Let's go back over here. And now I'm gonna just show it, like if you got a whole bunch of links here, you can actually clear at any given time. And while it's still live, it will automatically get the links again. If you wanna stop live scraping, just click that and you can clear out those links. And say if you're just surfing around in here and you wanna look at different, um, different items. And then you come to a part where you're like, oh, actually, I kind of want to scrape these. Just go live scraping, and it'll automatically go ahead and scrape what it's found in the browser. So I just found 108 pins. So that's how you can control that a little bit. So let's just go and clear those pins, stop the live scraping. And I want to go ahead and log into my account. So if we go log in, now I'm going to log into my account. And what I'd like to do is I want to look at the ads only. 
So this is really important as a marketer. When you've created your Pinterest account and if you've done a lot of browsing and history, stuff like that, you're most likely concentrating on a certain niche. Say you're selling stuff on Etsy or something like that. And you're always concentrating on certain products and you see all those ads that pop up. Have you ever wondered which one of those ads has the most repins, most saves, most reactions? Like that data is invaluable. Then you can look at those ads and possibly model those ads and promote your own stuff on Pinterest. So, or in any other ad platform. So let's go ahead and take and do that. So I've made it easy for you to log in. Um, you can obviously just put in your email and password and log in. But if you click this user password here and you go down to settings, open settings, in the software settings, I allow you to just, you can enter in your username, which is your email and then your password, and you, it saves it kind of on your computer in a file. Um, please note that your password is actually uh, encrypted so that like your password is never known to anybody, not even to the software or anything. It's always encrypted. So that there's no way of someone like stealing your password or something like that. So anyhow, you have that option. And the reason I put that there so that when you get to this page, I don't want to type it out. So I just click on this copy. If you can see it here. So copy, um, saved username. And now I can come here and right click and paste. Copy my password, right click and paste. And now I can log in. Just makes it fast and easy because you have to log in every time you use this tool. It's just the way that the software works. So it's really handy having that thing. So let's go ahead. And right now I have it set to only ads. So it's only going to scrape ads that it finds. And so I'm going to go let's move this side a bit here so I can get some more room. And what you do is you just start scrolling down. And I forgot to click the live scraping. So click live scraping. And you could see that it's going to find all of the ads. I know they're ads because ads actually have these big, long, kind of weird looking number after the um, big chunk of characters. If it's a pin, pins just have a number. This has like a whole bunch of, of letters and numbers and it's really long. So that's how you know it's an ad. So as you scroll down here, you'll see a bunch of ads showing up and you'll see like promoted by Squarespace, like that kind of stuff. And as I scroll, those ads are being picked up. So now we've already got 15. And so it's, it's pretty awesome. So it goes through and it's finding a bunch of ads. So when you're comfortable, when you're done, what you want to do is you go and add the pins just like before. And now I can analyze all of those ads. Remember, these are just strictly advertisements that showed up in my feed. Like I said, I don't think I've seen any other software on the internet, not that I could find, that does this. So now I can sort those ads by the number of saves, repins, and even all of the reactions. Those particular pins didn't have many reactions. So just like these ads were actually repinned. So now I can go and see this ad directly. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So now we have an idea of the top ads within my feed. And to be honest, this is the exact reason why I designed this software. I wanted to know the data for the ads that show up in my feed. So, and plus, again, you can go and look at the, the images by, uh, it's the larger image by scrolling here, or sorry, using the track bar. And like before, you can preview in different ways, preview the feed and sort by repins. And now you can see which ones have the most attention, which ads are doing the best. So pretty awesome feature. This feature is by far the best in the software and you're definitely gonna love it. Being able to uncover this hidden data from Pinterest is incredible. Even if you're doing research for clients and you wanna provide them reports, like I mentioned before in different videos, you can export these interactive reports right here, export, but you can also um, save as common delimited and text. So you can save all of this data in a spreadsheet and you can provide the spreadsheet to your clients. All right, it's cleared everything out. I just wanna show you one more, another thing here. So let's get back over to here. Now I also added some other bookmarks over here that are really important and really cool. So let me just show you what this is. So under Google, just go ahead and double click. It'll bring you to the Google search and I'm using a Google. So I, I save this, this bookmark here. So what is this bookmark? 
I've gone to Google and I've typed in the word site colon and then pinterest.com forward slash pin forward slash. So I'm telling Google, hey, look, I just want to see pins, particular only pins on Pinterest, on the site Pinterest, and that's it. So it returned 719 million. <laughs> it's quite a bit. So what we want to do is narrow this down a little bit. So what you can do is you can just do space and do a double quote and then put in whatever um, search term you want. You could see here, I already put one in that was says doghouse. Let's say um, cat uh, toy or something like that. And then another double quote. And if I click enter or click the little search. So now I'm telling Google, hey, look, I want to look at pins on Pinterest only that have the exact keyword combination of cat toy located in the pin. Cool. It found 231 and it will live scrape everything it sees on here. So I'm going to just clear this out and I'm going to go pins and ads. Usually it only finds pins. Ads are not really indexed. So those other pins you saw, they're actually not ads. They're just pins. It, uh, the ads will only really be uh, live scraped when you're actually on Pinterest. So ads are usually not indexed within the search engine is what I'm trying to say. Anyhow, if you go back to just pins and ads at the very top and just gets everything, you'll notice that it automatically, boom, it found 50 links in this first search. So if you actually go down to the bottom and like continue to the next page, boom, it found another 50. Boom, we got 150 pins now. Now, think about this for a minute. These are all the top ranked pins in the biggest search engine in the planet for the keywords cat toy. I mean, if that doesn't get you excited, nothing will. These are like the most important pins. This is what's driving traffic from Google. So imagine knowing the data for those pins. So let's go ahead and add those pins and analyze them. And now we're gonna see which ones have the most saves and repins from Google for that exact search term. Now, like I said, I haven't found any other tool on the internet can do this. It took me a long time to figure out how to do this without being um, forced to scrape Google and, and stuff like that, because Google doesn't like that. And I just use an integrated browser, which is pretty awesome. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop that so we can take a look at some of the data right away. And look at that. This pin here, 36,000 saves, almost 25,000 repins. Pretty awesome. So now we have an idea of what to do in your own marketing. I mean, this is just incredible data. And so if you go back to the browser, I've also integrated the ability to do it with Bing. So if we just stop the scraping, clear out these links and go to Bing, same idea. And you can do the same thing. Uh, just put dog. Click enter, start the live scraping, and here we go. Down 13, go to the next one, and keep going through. And I'll keep finding more and more pins, and Bing is a very popular search engine, so we can just go ahead and add those ping, pins again over here, and then continue scraping. So, pretty awesome. Now let's say you find some other internet web page somewhere on the internet where you'd like to actually do some live scraping. If if a web page contains pin links, then you can scrape it using this tool. It doesn't matter where it is. It could even be like another online Pinterest research product if it exists. You can log into your account and then just browse in your account and make sure that the live scraping is on. If it finds any pin links, most specifically it's looking for this keyword. So forward slash pin forward slash it's looking for that in the content and then specifically dealing with finding the pin um, slug is what it's called the part that's after it's called the slug anyhow some terminology behind the scenes there don't ignore that word but anyways if you're browsing around in some other page that contains pins this will pick it up so if you find another page that you would like to bookmark like say like in videos or something like that I guess it's not showing anything in there for that Anyhow, like just say, for example, you wanted to um, bookmark this. All you have to do is click bookmark, and then you can label it. You can, this is the bookmark link, and then you can select what um, folder you want, or you can, and then you can create it. 
So if I, let's say I wanted to put it in here and just test and go create bookmark, you can see it puts it here. Now to control everything in here, you just gotta right click and you got all these different things. It's pretty explanatory. Create bookmark, edit, delete, create folder, expand all. All this data, all this um, stuff is also accessible by clicking the controls button or you can just right click. So it's quite easy. So, you know, if you don't want this, you can also move them around. So if I take this, hold the little thing, I could actually just drag it. And if I want to put it up into the Google folder, you can bring it back or you bring it back down. So, or I can just delete it if I want. If I right click, I can go um, delete bookmark. So pretty self-explanatory, right? Anyhow, that's how you can add bookmarks. You can also manually create them. You can create one just by putting a label link in choosing a folder or creating a folder. So if you just type a thing in here and create it, it'll just make a new folder for you. But that's how you use that. And one other thing here, you can actually hide the pins. If you want some more room, you can kind of move this over a little bit and you got more room in your browser. You can show the pins again over here. Again, you can stop live scraping. These are pretty self-explanatory. I think I've gone through that already. There is a Pinterest login here for you. So if you want to Go to the login, or I guess the login is is um, bookmarked here. Well, I think I've covered everything in this one that I could think of. Sorry for the long video, but this is the most exciting tool in the software, and I'm sure you're going to spend most of your time using this tool. That's it. We'll see you in the next video.